Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm trying to speak low because I have my kids in the other room and I've got my son occupied playing and walking around before I go out here and do my second shift. So, um, first of all, remember to like, give this video a great big thumbs up, make sure you share, comment down below any questions, any additional advice, or if there's just anything else that you guys want me to look into um, and then report back to you guys on this channel, I will be more than happy to do so. And as always, don't forget to subscribe. I am trying to reach 50 subscribers. And once I make it to 50 subscribers, I would like to be able to give away a $50 gift card. So Let's jump right into this video. Um, if you see me looking down, it's because I'm actually looking at my notebook. Um, I am scheduled today to work a double shift. I already worked 11.30 to 1.30. Actually, I extended it to 2 p.m. And then I'm going back out in just a little while. It's about 4.30 right now, but I scheduled myself to work 5 to 9. But I wanted to give you guys a little bit of the pros and the cons. I'm not sure if I actually did this video already. If I did, um, then we'll just consider this to be an updated version of it because I've got a little bit more experience with DoorDash and... Um, I just feel like, as you know, information and facts continue to change with time, depending on um, the marketplace and also the circumstances. They could have changed the pay model or whatever. So in this case, I'm just more or less going to be talking about, like I said, the pros and the cons of working with DoorDash from my experience working in my particular marketplace. So for those of you who haven't been watching my previous DoorDash videos, I work in Orange County, California. So these are all market dependent to my specific market and my market is orange county okay so let's start with the pros the pros that i like are number one schedule flexibility whenever you work with doordash you have the possibility of either clicking dash now without being scheduled um, as long as your area is shaded red or pink you can work at that time um, as well, if you are also actually scheduled to work a certain time, where let's say, for example, you're scheduled to work a five to nine, but you have an emergency that comes up and you need to end your dash, you can end your dash and you don't have to worry about receiving any type of penalty. It's not going to affect your ratings in any way, shape or form. On the same token, let's say you need to cancel your whole shift. Um, completely you can't work five to nine at all for whatever the reason may be the same time you can cancel your dash and you will not receive a penalty so that's number one um, in my experience number two a lot of the times whenever I'm scheduled to do any dashes or whenever I'm working and I'm dashing I get sent out short delivery distances my total distance may only be three hour no I'm sorry not three hours three miles for the complete trip and what I mean by that is it may be a mile to get to the restaurant to pick up the food and then two miles to get to the um, the customer to drop it off or it may be two miles um, I've had some deliveries that were five miles so it just really depends on um, I guess what the need is in that moment but most of the time I don't really have to cherry pick like I notice you have to do sometimes with Grubhub because they may send you really really far and that's been my experience when I've worked with Grubhub I ended up going 15 miles away from my starting point and the payout wasn't that great with DoorDash I don't have a lot of that in my particular market I know some people may actually I've seen that people have gotten orders that may be um, they say it could be like eight or nine miles and they're only getting $10 payout, which in my opinion, isn't really all that bad. I know, I understand that you have to take into consideration the drive there and the drive back, but I would say that timing goes into it as well. For me, if it is, let's just say I'm scheduled to work 5 30 PM to 8 30 PM and I get an order like that around 8 30, no, about 8 15 PM. And it's a eight or nine mile drive. For one, I'm not going to worry too much about it because there's no traffic. For two, most likely it's going to be the very last order of the evening. So I don't have to worry about rushing back over to my starting place if I'm taken out of my, my region boundaries to um, get more orders. So I'll take it. 
Um, so in that case, it doesn't really bother me. But again, this is my experience. In my experience, I don't get every order that I get is not me driving nine or 10 miles away for a bogus payout. Okay, so that's number two. Number three, um, in my particular marketplace for lunch and or dinner, I'm saying and or lunch and or dinner, I average $15 an hour. That's from a slow night being a Monday to a booming night, meaning a Saturday or a Friday. Okay, $15 an hour, not bad because minimum wage where I am is only $12 an hour. It does go higher than that depending on if they have peak booths or depending on if there are, um, I don't know if it's just extremely busy that day, it can go higher, but the minimum is $15 and that's not a guarantee. That's just what I'm averaging. Okay. Um, third is they have what's called a half pay guarantee. For example, if you go bring him in here, walk him in here or just walk him a little bit. Sorry about that. You guys, um, if I am delivering or headed to a restaurant to, um, pick up an order. Like for example, today I already worked my morning shift from 1130, like I said, 1130 to two. Um, and my last order, it was actually, I was really excited because it's the highest amount that I've ever been offered since I've been working for DoorDash. It was a $12 payout, but it was a 7.9, um, Kiki, he's following you. Make sure he doesn't go to the stairs. It was a 7.9, um, mile trip yeah. in total. So of course I took it because I'm thinking, Hey, this is going to be my last order. I think it was probably like 145 or 140. So I went on ahead and took it. There's no traffic. It, I was going to make it there in record time. I was two miles away from the restaurant. I went to the restaurant, but when I got to the restaurant, the address ended up being for a church. So this was a ghost order. Um, and I'll explain that when I get to the cons. So I contacted DoorDash support and said, hey, you know, I'm here at the location of this restaurant. But it's indeed not a restaurant. It looks like an abandoned church. There's nobody here. I tried to open the door. I'm not sure what's going on with this order, but there's nothing here. What would you like for me to do? They looked it up and, to, and when they looked it up on their end, they said that there was actually no address at all for the restaurant. So they went on ahead and canceled it. But since I had already taken the time to drive to this location, they ended up giving me half of the payout. The payout, like I said earlier, was about $12. So I ended up getting $6.19 for that order. Okay. Um, I don't know if the other, um, platforms do that because I haven't ran to, ran into any situations like this, but I know for DoorDash, they will pay you, um, half if you don't leave him. Sorry about that. You guys don't leave him. He could have turned around and went to the stairs. They will pay you at least half of, um, what you were expected to get had you completed that whole trip and delivery. Okay. And the last thing from what I've noticed in terms of a, another pro is that there are always constant peak boosts weekly, at least in my marketplace. Now, I know in the particular, there's one city in particular that I like to work in, but it's not the peak boost for that usually only come on the weekends. But however, in my marketplace as a whole, there are other cities where peak boosts are there every single day and those extra peak boosts really add up it could end up being something as low as one dollar extra per order or seven dollars i've seen it go as high as seven dollars extra per order and the uh city is really not that far from me i just i get lazy so i don't want to drive that far so i just accept whatever is <laughs> in the city where i like to work in um so anyways yeah those are my pros for doordash um, schedule flexibility, no penalty, short delivery distance majority of the time, and average payout of $15 an hour during the lunch and dinner, um, dinner time, half pay guarantee upon arrival at the restaurant if the, um, if the order is canceled for whatever the reason may be, and then of course weekly peak boost. Okay, so let's get to the cons. The thing that I don't like the most about DoorDash is the rating system. They rate you on acceptance rate, on time and early, and completion rate. Now, I have 100% completion rate. I have 94, 95% of being hushed out early or on time. 
And then I have, um, what is it? What did I say? 100% completion rate. I think it's, oh, and then acceptance rate, 96%. So I know that there are a lot of, what do you want? What do you want? You want me? Hold on, you guys. Let me grab my baby. Hand them to me, Kiki. Here we go. You want to sit right here with me and finish the video? Hmm? You want to finish the video? Can you see yourself? You want to say hi? Say hi. <laughs> there we go. Say hi. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So back to the cons, the rating system. Acceptance rate, completion rate, and on time and early rate. My ratings are pretty good right now, but they have been bless you, pretty bad. Oh, and of course there's customer ratings. Um, my customer rating right now is at a 4.72, but it has gone as low as I believe 4.4 or 4.5. And I was a bit concerned about it, but those honestly were situations that were outside of my control, which brings me back to my, my point. Um, I think that DoorDash gives way too much control to the restaurants and the customers because let's be honest, a customer could just see me and say, oh, she's black. I don't like her and just give me a bad rating. I could come professionally dressed. I could be there on time. I could be sweet, which I am a lot of the time. You're saying yes? Are you agreeing with me? You see, even he gets it. Uh, I am all the time. I say, hello, how are you doing? I make sure to tell them to enjoy their meal. I am always polite. I am 100% of the time I am on, no, I'm early. It's very rare that I'm actually right on time, but most of the time I am early. So even though a lot of people feel like these ratings are hard to obtain, I feel like if you do your very best, it's really not that hard. And in the end, <laughs> let's just say a situation does come up where, hold on you guys, I'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry about that, y'all. So I had to take a little break and get my little baby, as you can see right here in the screen, who's creeping on the side together. So hopefully, uh, <laughs> there it goes. I was about to say when it come, when the when the thing focuses, we'll be good. Okay. So back to the cons of DoorDash rating system. I don't like the rating system. However, there's a way to work around the rating system of DoorDash is what I was trying to say. There is a customer rating, there is acceptance, there is completion, and there is on time and early. So there's four different. I've been saying three, but there's actually four different. I believe that if you get your ratings <coughs> to a high point, then when these situations come up that are outside of your control, for example, I, and this is an example for me, um, I went to a restaurant one time. It was a Saturday night. It was uh, uh, real, real busy. It was a taco place. When I got there, they were actually out of meat for the tacos. So they were saying that it was going to take about a good 30, 40 minutes for them to even get the order to me. So, of course, I contacted the customer first to let them know, hey, I'm here at the restaurant. However, they ran out of such and such. So I'm going to have to wait for them now to complete your order um, it's going to take them 30 minutes to complete it. And then, of course, I still have to drive to the customer. The customer was okay. She was more or less, surprisingly, she was concerned about me. And she was just like, she literally, because I'm talking to her on the phone, not texting her. She said, you know, I'm okay, but, you know, I don't know if you want to wait. And, da -da -da. and I told her, you, I said, you know what? You know, it does actually affect me because time is money and while I'm sitting here waiting for this, I'm not available to accept any other orders. But at the same time, I believe in great customer service. And I didn't want her to have to wait however long um, for another dasher to pick up that order. It could have been an hour from then. It could have been, it could have even been five minutes, ten minutes. I don't know. I just wasn't willing to gamble. So I just decided to stay. I did contact DoorDash support. Uh-oh, baby, be careful, you see. Be careful. He hit his head on my knee. Um, I did contact DoorDash support to let them know and you know, they didn't really offer too much help. They, it was the same thing for them. It was just kind of like, well, there's nothing that we can do. They're busy. You can stay or, you know, um, we can unassign the delivery, but then I wasn't going to get compensated for it. Um, it was just a lot. So I don't know. Um, I did 
you know, I was upset mainly because I knew that me, this was going to make me late to deliver the order and me being late to deliver the order was going to affect that particular rating of me being on time or early. So once I saw after I had completed this delivery and I saw that it did drop me now, it's not like a huge drop. For example, if you're at a hundred percent and you're late, it's not going to drop you from a hundred percent to 50% on time and early in terms of your ratings. So I do feel like sometimes people be over exaggerating or making it bigger than what it is. It's not like that. But you say hi. He's waving you guys. <laughs> but um it still does affect you. And I do understand when it's something that's out of your control, in the end, you don't want to be penalized for it. Even if it's a small percentage, you don't want to be penalized. I don't want to be penalized, which is why I was on the phone telling them that this is unfair. However, like I said, um, they wasn't really, they were not able to offer me any help in the situation. They didn't provide a good resolution. And in the end, it was like, oh, well, we don't have the ability to change your ratings. You would have to contact corporate. We could submit an email for you and have someone from corporate call you back. But they would have the ability to do that or get you in touch with whoever could. That was more time that I want to take out of my life. For something that I felt like was just really is whatever at this point. So I just said, okay, you know what? From now on, I'm going to make a valid effort, like I said, to keep my ratings high. So that way, if I do end up being late, if I'm already at 96% and I end up being late, it's not going to drop me way down to 70 something percent. I may go from 96 to 95%. And if that's not the last delivery of the night, then my next three orders will end up bringing me right back to 96 percent so i don't worry about it um the only other thing is like i said the customer ratings they could end up not liking me just because whenever i go to do deliveries i am dressed professionally whether i have on this doordash polo or not my hair is always tied back um i have on clean 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 pants clean shirt, clean sweater, whatever it is, I look presentable. No flip-flops, none of that. I look presentable. But I have still received some pretty bad ratings, and I don't know why. Um, I haven't gotten any emails from DoorDash or whatever, but my ratings, like I said, the lowest they have gone has been like 4.4. Um, that's the lowest. Now I'm at a 4.72. So that is to me a really big negative of DoorDash because I think that they just give way too much credit or way too much um, power to customers knowing that customers could literally just look at me and go, you know what, I'm not feeling her and give me a bad rating. Food could be on time, could be warm, could be in good condition, but they just not feeling me. So, you know, there's just certain things that you just kind of can't get around. But moving on, ghost orders. Um, I think I was actually explaining earlier too that I had received a ghost order and they did. And this is where I found out about them compensating me for half. I got to, I think I started talking about it. Um, I got to the delivery, the, the merchant and there was no merchant basically. Long story short, um, I don't want to go into it all over again. But I got to the merchant and there was no merchant. I contacted them and they said that they would give me half. I was supposed to get $12 for it. I ended up getting six. Um, it was going to be the last delivery for that particular dash anyway. I was upset because I ended up driving, but it's not like I drove far. I'm glad that I didn't end up driving the whole complete um, trip because the whole trip itself was 7.9 miles for $12 and I think 50 cent payout. But I only ended up driving a little bit less than two miles from where I was to the supposed merchant to pick up the order. So not too much gas loss in that situation. It's just the irritation that you end up driving. And I, I would have preferred to accept another order. But in the end of the day, at the end of the day, I still ended up getting something from that. However, I, you know, I did tell them this is not the first time this has happened where I received a ghost order or I went to a restaurant and there was another dasher there that picked up my order. Um, and, and it was just... You know, I'll go into that at another time. I'm pretty sure I explained it in another video. But ghost orders is definitely something that DoorDash needs to work on because, again, it's kind of a gamble. You don't, I don't know if this order is a ghost order. You know, you just hope and pray. Um, only if you know the restaurant exists and you've been there before. It's kind of like you take a chance, especially when a new restaurant pops up on the app. You're kind of like, oh, my God, I hope this place actually exists. So that's another um, negative for me.
occasional long distance travel with DoorDash and there's no good payout. So there have been some times where they're expecting me to go six miles and the delivery may only be, the, the payout may only be $6. Now for a lot of people that's not really bad, but for me it's bad, especially in the beginning of my dash. I don't want to drive six miles because I have to drive back to get back near my starting place because one thing is uh another negative with DoorDash is not a lot of the times when you drive out of the city that you're supposedly working in like for example if you put that you are working in the city of Los Angeles but your delivery ends up taking you to Hearthon or Gardena or something like that you're not necessarily going to get orders for Los Angeles because you're all the way over here in Hearthon and, and um in Gardena. So same thing. If I take this order, for example, if I'm saying I'm going to work in the city of Pico Rivera, but I get an order and it ends up taking me to La Habra or La Mirada or something like that. A lot of the times I don't end up getting orders as I'm traveling back trying to get to my starting place um, because DoorDash, which this part is actually a positive, but DoorDash actually um, sends you orders based on how close you are to the restaurant because they want to make sure that their customer is going to receive the food in the shortest amount of time. So that part is a positive. It's just a negative that they will send you sometimes further out than you want to go. But again, it's occasional. It's not that often for me, as I stated above in the pros. Don't bite me. Okay, and last but not least, dry spells even when scheduled. This to me honestly ah. Hush up. This to me honestly has been an issue with all of the platforms and not just DoorDash. Um, I've experienced this especially with Postmates and even with Grubhub. The last scheduled block that I work with, um you want Chi Chi? Okay, hold on. The last scheduled block that I work with with Grubhub I actually didn't get very many orders. I was scheduled to work two and a half hours, but I only got like maybe three orders and they were all bad, bad to me. Like the distance was far, the payout was horrible. So I ended up rejecting them. With DoorDash, it doesn't happen to me very often, but a lot of the times when I schedule myself a large um, shift, like five to nine, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes I may get orders from five to eight o'clock and then from eight to nine it's completely dry like i'll sit there for 30 minutes and i don't get anything i don't like that because i want to stay busy for the whole time that i'm scheduled even if you end up sending me two little itty bitty tiny orders at the end for my last hour if they're both three miles and they uh, why are you trying to shut me up y'all say what you're doing to me and they try to, uh, 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 and they're like three miles and the payout is only five fifty. I don't mind that because it's at the end. I still want to make money for that hour. <laughs> but sitting there, I don't like that. So I'm going to go, you guys, because as you can see, my handsome son right here is signaling me to um, give him some attention and let y'all go. So on that note, I hope that my pros and cons were helpful i hope that you guys were able to get something out of it um again everything is market dependent what works for me in my area may or may not work for you Shh, wherever you are i'm closing it out right now it may or may not work for you but i'm gonna say as always you guys make sure that you give my video a great big thumbs up share especially if you like my content make sure to comment below any additional questions and concerns or any advice that you would like to know i will definitely respond to you as soon as possible and let's not forget subscribe and tell your friends and your friends and your friends and your family members and everybody uncle curtis cousin brutus whoever it is let them know that they need to jump on the bandwagon and subscribe because this is where it's at that was kind of corny but whatever i'm gonna roll with it i ain't even gonna edit that out but i'm gonna get to him and uh it's about 5 11 this is part oh this is part one of my video you guys so stay tuned because there's gonna be another video i am going to do a ride along um for my shift tonight and my two dashes tomorrow i want to let you guys know what i come out with or what i come back i'm gonna say that what my ending amount is 
this based on the peak boosts that are going around. So stay tuned, you guys. We'll see you guys in another video. Deuces. You want to say bye-bye? Tell the people bye-bye. Say bye-bye.